Hey there, this is Level 1 Online. For all my returning subscribers, welcome back to the channel. For anybody who's new, who has recently possibly downloaded the latest image I released, welcome to the channel. I hope you find the information I provide informative. The title of this video is going to be called Help. My A and B buttons are reversed. What I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate is how to go ahead and change that back. And I do apologize. I did make the assumption that everybody would know how to do this off the top of their head. Uh, I'm learning that people are still new to the, uh, the retro pie and it's not as easy for them. I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Okay. First thing we're going to do, we're going to pull up Google. Let me go back a screen. We're going to pull up Google. We're just going to type in putty, P-U-T-T-Y. We're going to go ahead and click on the first link. Download putty. Go ahead, click here. If you want to go ahead and install the program like I have, I have it installed already. You can go ahead and just click on one of these links, depending on which operating system. If you have a 32 or 64 bit. If you want just the EXE, I'm going to go ahead and click right here on the 64 bit putty.exe. We're going to go ahead and hit save. It's going to save it to my downloads. We're going to click right here. We're going to go ahead and click on that right there. We're going to go ahead and run it. Right here on this screen, we're going to go ahead and type in retro pi for host name, or you can type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. If you don't know how to get that from the retro pi menu, uh, you can go to retro pie settings and there should be an option there to show IP address and you can fetch that and just type that in Make sure you got SSH selected right here The image that I recently put out it already has SSH enabled and from what I understand a lot of content providers who are also releasing images usually have it enabled if you are using uh, just a brand new vanilla RetroPie image that you got directly off RetroPie, <clears throat> they have disabled it there's plenty of videos out there how to do it. That is handled <clears throat> through the Raspy config uh, selection within RetroPie settings. And then there's an option called interfacing options. You go in there and that's where you uh, change the SSH setting to enable it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hit open. L give me just a second. Let me go ahead and switch screens. Here we are. We're going to go ahead, it says login as, we're going to go ahead and type in PI for PI, hit enter. The password is raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, enter. So on this screen, it's going to show us the storage. This is a great way to check out the storage right here. We got 30 gigabyte, it's a 30 gig, well, 32 gigabyte uh, card. Uh, but it says right here it's reading as 30 gigabytes used 25 available 3.4 gigs so use percentage 89 percent is being used it'll also show you the temperature right here so right here we're going to go ahead and type in cd oh no no no, no. i'm sorry we're going to type in sudo period slash capital r retro Capital P, Pi, a nut, uh, actually a dash, capital S, setup, slash. Now, retro pi, all lowercase this time, underscore, setup dot sh. Go ahead and push enter. All right, great. So we are here at the RetroPie uh, setup script. One thing you can do on my uh, particular download, you can actually hit update RetroPie setup script. What that does, it, it basically updates all the shortcuts to fetch packages. At the current moment, I do not recommend hitting update all install packages uh, because if you update the emulation station and I believe the uh, Sega Genesis core, there is an issue that might occur um, and it might jack up some of the settings I did. Um, 
So for now, wait until I, I put out a video on how to update. You can update, for example, like your final burn alpha uh, core. So you can actually go here. I actually did this the other day to make sure that everything works correctly. Manage main packages. You can go here, LR. And what I did is I did an update from source. It took it took a while. It took about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but what it did, I did notice that it did uh, fix some frame rate issues with a couple of games. There is still an issue with putting the coin in. Uh, it only allows one coin. That's very strange. I could have sworn it worked just fine on the uh, on the Windows version of Final Burn Alpha. And that error I'm talking about, that's happening to certain poly game master games, okay? Uh, for example, your Capcom games, it's coins load up just fine. All right, so let's go ahead and back up out of there. So there's two ways to get uh, to go ahead and fix your uh, A and B buttons to fix the, the swap issue. You're going to go right here to Configuration Tools. We're going to go down here to Emulation Station. Hit enter. What I recommend doing is go ahead and hit clear, reset, emulation station, input configuration. It's going to go ahead and wipe all the controllers you got set up. Go ahead and hit OK. Then we're going to go down here to swap A and B buttons. Go ahead and push enter. Now it says default. OK. Go ahead and hit cancel. And at this point, you can go ahead and hit back. You can go ahead and perform a reboot, and it'll go ahead and reboot, and it'll give you a chance to set up your controller again. Another way to get to that particular screen, you can go right here and manage packages. You can go right here and manage main packages. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Manage core packages. Emulation station is a core package. We're going to go right there to emulation station. We're going to go right here to configuration and options. Same thing, you can hit the hit it from right here. You can go right here to swap A and B buttons. Now it's I put it back to swapped. Okay. While I'm here, I do want to show you something else. You can go here to run command. And you can actually you can go to configuration and options. And this is where you can actually enable it or disable. I currently have it disabled. If let's say you want to tinker around, switch up some of the emulators. You can go ahead and re-enable it, okay? And if you're not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll explain. When you go ahead and start a ROM, there is a screen right before the ROM starts, and it'll say like push A uh, to go into menu. And you got to go ahead and hit A really fast, and that'll allow you to go ahead and select and make certain selections for whatever emulator you want to use for that particular ROM or whatever that ROM set. Okay, so you can go ahead now, hit cancel. We're going to go ahead and hit back. We can hit back. Okay, go ahead and hit back. And we're going to actually go down right here. Make sure you got OK selected. Go ahead and hit perform reboot. Are you sure you want to reboot? Hit the left. Yes. Done. Okay, so now your system is going to go ahead and reboot. It's going to give you the opportunity to set up the controls again. One thing I want to remind you is when you're going through the menu, it's going to ask you what hotkey you want to set up. If you're using an Xbox uh, controller, Xbox 360, let's say you set that the hotkey to the guide button, okay? So when you want to exit out of a game, you want to hit whatever you assigned a hotkey, along at the same time with the start button and the old emulation station it would automatically set it to select so you would hit start and select to go ahead and exit out of a rom okay this time around you have the ability to set that hotkey if you want to set it to something else besides select if you're accustomed to the old way when you get to that part just go ahead and hit select so that way when you go into a rom you can hit start and select to get out or you can hit uh, select and I believe it's B to go ahead and get into your retro arc menu. Oh, no, no, no. Select and B is actually reset. Uh, select and X will take you to that green screen or retro arc menu. 
Okay. And then I believe there's other shortcuts with uh, safe state and load state. Select, which is hotkey, and L and R will give you the ability to do uh, safe states and load states. I'm going to put a link to the, uh, the wiki article. Uh, you got to remember that the layout of the buttons, the face of it, it's a virtual controller that they're using. And the face, it uses the Super Nintendo layout. It does not use the Xbox layout, the, the way A and B are mapped. It's mapping it the way a Super Nintendo is mapped. But then with the L and R and uh, shoulders and triggers, it uses it from the PlayStation Xbox convention. Okay, so... It took me a little time to wrap my mind around that, and I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and link that article so you can go ahead and read up on it. Thanks again for stopping by. Hope you guys have a great day.